Uh, welcome everyone uh, to the next session. Uh, this one will be about uh, build fast, ship faster, and uh, iterate better. Uh, it will be presented uh, by Deepika uh, Upadai. And um, uh, just one note, uh, if you have any question during uh, during the session, uh, please use the Q&A section uh, here in Open. Uh, uh, please, uh, the stage is yours. Great. Thanks, Nobomi. Uh, uh, cool. Uh, let's get started. As uh, you uh, stated, we are going to discuss about the the build and release process and all the learnings that I uh, gathered uh, working uh, with large open source project. And uh, for myself, I work as a software engineer in Ceph Storage Red Hat. And uh, without further ado, let's uh, get started. So let's take a look into uh, what uh, the problem is. So uh, from a view of a story, so we, uh, we have Alice and Bob, two developers who think, uh, we, who thought that they will collaborate on a project. And they start working on a project and they have the basics uh, in and uh, they decide to, uh, let's see, uh, they decide to make their project open source. So uh, the code is open and uh, the users uh, find their project interesting and they start using their project. And uh, with the adoption of uh, the project by users, they start getting some complaints and issues uh, that uh, this code is not working in my pro environment, the code is breaking, uh, environment, the code is not compiling, and uh, the code is buggy, what not. Alice and Bob uh, being uh, uh, just on the first stage of project, they are clueless uh, trying to identify, okay, how can we uh, make sure that these things are not repeated and uh, uh, what do we have to do for that? So see, they seek our guidance and uh, they identify what all things they have to work on. So they finalize that we want some kind of standardization, some kind of maintenance of the code quality uh, so that uh, the project that we are working on is becoming scalable and uh, others can also study and contribute to this project. So they want a matrix for code quality. They want that uh, the project that they are working on, uh, when it goes to the user, uh, it should be less buggy, so they want uh, some kind of identifying and catching those bugs early on in the development process, and they want to test uh, the environment in which their users are using uh, their projects on, so that they also uh, keep things out of picture of uh, issues related to different uh, build environments. So. This is what basically that uh, they uh, find the need for. And uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, addressing of these needs, um, they read about continuous integration and deployment pipeline. Uh, as we also say it as DevOps. And uh, what it actually is, let's look into the definition. So it is a coding philosophy, a set of practices that drive the development teams to implement small incremental changes to the code base. So uh, the whole philosophy states that if you have a code base, you want to uh, incrementally make changes to it so that you know that if there are issues uh, uh, arising, these ch changes are thoroughly tested for uh, them. And if uh, something is missed, we can go back to uh, uh, a good version. So that's why uh, we use version control in these repositories. And uh, uh, then while we are developing these codes, we also want to uh, make that these small changes, small changes are tested on various platforms and uh, teams validate with all the thorough testing uh, that they can think of on these changes. So uh, that's uh, the process of continuous uh, integration does. The second thing that we want to make sure is that these changes are then 
uh, reaching to the customer in a good manner. So uh, we want that these changes will be built and packaged in an automated fashion. We don't want uh, developers to focus uh, their time more into these processes. So we want to employ automation here. And uh, in such a manner that consistently we have all the tested changes built and packaged and shipped to the customer's environment, customer or user's environment. So this leads to overall improvement in our software quality. And uh, that's what is the purpose of uh, CI CD pipeline. So uh, as I said that uh, this is the pipeline, we specifically see that there are roles related to DevOps. But as I uh, see them, it is more about of mindset that every person in the development team should be aware of. And uh, because they are the active developers, they identify the shortcomings better. So it is the role of everyone to contribute to uh, this whole ecosystem uh, actively. Of course, if there are uh, specific roles to them, then shortcomings could be identified better. But uh, I think uh, it's uh, uh, more of a mindset of every individual that they should have. So uh, if the project is in initial stage, uh, we are worried. Should we invest time in developing this pipeline? Is it worth it? But uh, I'll, I'll say that it is worth it because of the points listed here. And uh, basically, uh, if you have a stable project, then it's going to uh, uh, equate to a greater customer satisfaction, greater user experience, a user experience is better, your word of mouth is going to travel, your project is going to be uh, used, and uh, it's going to uh, uh, be adopted well, and the production would be less buggy. And uh, if the production is less buggy, that means developer productivity, less downtime for the users, and uh, that means you're, you are already uh, um, on the right track from the very start. And uh, then uh, if you are, if you are want to be a little bit risky with experimentations on code, you are in doing that in small and calculated fashion. So the cost of experimentation is re reducing uh, uh, multifold. So that's why it becomes more forgiving to uh, you and uh, your risks. Uh, so uh, as we say, as uh, it's stated that continuous integration doesn't guarantee that your project would be bug free, but it will, uh, it tends to making it uh, such that uh, we identify those bugs uh, early in the project and uh, we uh, create an ecosystem uh, that these bugs, if identified, we have the tools to identify them uh, easier. So uh, that's why we have to continuously uh, add the feedback to the pipeline. And uh, uh, that's why I would uh, emphasize everybody to invest uh, in uh, having one for continuous integration development pipeline. And uh, how, uh, what are the essentials that uh, the CICD pipeline should have? Let's take a look into that part. But first of all, I'll just a quote uh, about the philosophy from where it all begins that leave the campsite in a better state than you found it. That uh, simply uh, encapsulated from that um, you have to adopt, uh, that you have to add a feedback uh, to the whole process if and when you identify a shortcoming, a buggy code, a thing that hurts uh, production code you have to go back and address that. How can we incorporate uh, testing for that uh, such point? So um, from there it begins and how uh, other tools and design philosophies that you can uh, incorporate in it. Let's look into that. First thing is the architecture of using stable branch. So the whole point is that uh, we uh, use a development branch master. Uh, we uh, want to make changes into the code base. We uh, open 
all the changes against master and we want to first add these changes into master the second feature is uh, added second feature is enhanced we again add those feature to master the master is uh, continuously under uh, under testing and everything uh, is going on and we find that there are bugs in this in these features so again bug fixes are uh, added to master once we know that okay this feature is stabilized now we cherry pick those changes cherry pick, cherry pick means picking up those changes uh, those commits and adding them to a stable branch and uh, the similar uh, process you keep on continue stabilize the feature and then add it to the stable branch and then uh, at certain point we release this stable branch because that's what stable stable branch adoption means uh, the second is using feature toggles basically we are tra tra making the user adopt a feature uh, without being uh, worrying about what if the feature breaks so uh, we simply add a feature toggle that if uh, you have uh, you, know, you uh, have turned off this uh, feature, yeah, you can revert back to the old style. But if the feature is working fine, we uh, add the new feature toggle as on. And uh, in the later stages, once this feature is adopted by more customers, we can remove these feature toggles. Then. Uh, the third thing comes is uh, code reviews and fair programmings and uh, then version controlling uh, we, we have you can use git svn uh, mercurial any uh, any version control of your choice uh, build artifact and automations some tools like jenkins github actions uh, these can help with automating that uh, uh, the, the whole process of compiling the code and uh, building packages, uh, we can offload them to uh, these automations. Then general tests. So once your code is in, you have, you should make sure that uh, your general testing, like beginning with unit tests, integration tests, API tests, regression tests, performance tests uh, uh, are performed. So these are essentials that we want to bring into our pipeline how do uh, we do that in Ceph? let's take a look into that so uh, as we see uh, in Ceph, what we do is if a pull request is open against the master branch or the development branch uh, we track this uh, in our project tracker now, uh, tracker.cef is a, using readmine as a to tool, and we track a bug or uh, a feature in that and make sure that nobody is doing redundant work, that feature is uh, being tracked, and uh, we identify if the, we see similar failure in future. future. So uh, uh, we track the pull request in the readmine and uh, the readmine in here. and. Uh, uh, after having uh, the pull request changes reviewed by the reviewers, uh, simultaneously we have checks uh, uh, that are checking for uh, certain things. Now what those things are essentially are covered here with the tooling. Uh, we use Jenkins as well as GitHub Actions. We'll cover that shortly later on. So uh, we perform static checks. That is the code quality. Uh, it, it's uh, it's up to the mark, and styling guide is supported as per uh, Ceph's guideline. Uh, the code commit is some having signed off by line, so that we know who the owner of code is. Then build testing. This code change is not breaking any uh, tests. API testing, unit tests. Uh, these all are in employed in um, uh, the PR itself. Uh, when a pull request is open, these checks uh, should succeed for um, the successful merge of the changes. So once uh, these checks are passed and the reviews are passing, we have a, a Jenkins trigger. And uh, the Jenkins trigger, uh, once uh, uh, the pull request 
this branch is pu pushed to a branch that triggers Jenkins, we have build artifacts building with a Jenkins job. What this Jenkins job uh, does is basically it will uh, test or build uh, all the uh, artifacts, or everything from scratch, all the packages for uh, various distros that our users use. So as you see, CentOS 8, Ubuntu, uh, Windows, and uh, we keep track of uh, seeing how the builds are looking in the Jenkins dash dashboard. And uh, once the packages are available, we want to do the integration testing in Tharo. So what we do is we use a framework of our own tautology. And uh, uh, using tautology and the packages just built, we create scenarios uh, which are similar to what our users do. So if you want to uh, stress test, uh, 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 input output of our uh, our function uh, project uh, Ceph, uh, in a network intensive uh, environment we can uh, do that uh, we uh, we can introduce network failures we can perform uh, all kind of operations long duration runs short duration runs these are jobs are uh, picking up different distros, CentOS 8 and uh, RHEL, and uh, different distros from the packages just built. And uh, once these tests are passing, as you see, there are some failures. But uh, with those failures, we always record those failures. And uh, if those failures are not related to the code change, the PR is merged. If not, uh, the, again, whole cycle of uh, uh, updating the PR and uh, doing all uh, these tests are performed. And uh, once the PR is merged, uh, we, uh, this feature is stabilized. We or backport or take those features and bring it to stable branches, perform the whole uh, testing thing uh, in uh, the stable branches as well and uh, uh, collaborate uh, or using Trello and the project tracker to uh, to have this feature in uh, the stable branch. Now we have once the uh, these features are in and it's time for shipping, uh, uh, we uh, update the release notes and uh, uh, we have mention the notable change and then uh, the packages are built uh, again going through a whole process and uh, uh, getting checks from team leads to seeing how the tests are looking uh, we finally release um, the containers as well as uh, the packages uh, in down in Ceph, uh, mirror so that's how uh, the uh, uh, life cycle of a uh, code change looks in large projects like Ceph. Now, uh, uh, um, let's, uh, now let's go back to slides. Uh, some of the utilities that are uh, really, that comes really handy for large scale projects. Uh, first uh, that uh, I would suggest using is Make. Now, Make is really good if you have a, uh, you are working with C, C++ projects or any projects that uh, use uh, uh, shell, uh, uh, shell, uh, shell script uh, based operation. And uh, um, uh, you, want to, uh, you want to not uh, do redundant work of compiling every time. You can use make script. We use CMake, which is kind of a wrapper over make and generates make file to uh, uh, to uh, do the same work but in more uh, uh, pro project uh, independent uh, environment independent manner so uh, i think we are short of time so i'll just mention the uh, utilities again github action it's a really good tool and uh, it runs a uh, github contain uh, it it ha it deploys a container and then uh, based on push event if the pull request is pushed 
uh, if it's opened based on these events, we can run uh, the changes or checks on them. An example of this in our code base is uh, basically if the code is outdated, the GitHub action will flag it with needs rebase. So it's it's uh, doing that when a pull request is opened or synchronized or reopened. So um, uh, and based on these uh, API calls, it's going to uh, check uh, and update whether with the these uh, required text. Now Jenkins is a really good other, other utilities just like uh, GitHub Actions. Uh, it's providing the workflow and uh, all the builds, artifact, um, everything we saw in, in, uh, in the previous slides over Jenkins space. It's very robust and good community support is there. So uh, Jenkins is other the tooling I would suggest. Now uh, uh, to summarize, uh, what all things you should be looking for and uh, how large uh, scale projects have built and released project process incorporated. I'm going to uh, suggest these do's and don'ts. Use a version control, have a project tracker. You can use the read mine or any other uh, project tracker. Even GitHub issues work for initial uh, uh, time, but uh, track the issues, track uh, the features and uh, then uh, have peer reviews, uh, at least uh, the condition could be two peer reviews and documentation styling should be uh, adopted to be standard. And uh, of course, make do not work again and again on the build artifact and everything. Those pipelines should always uh, tend to be automated and uh, ensure that uh, if the code is breaking from where the failure is uh, coming from, and everything you have monitoring of uh, those things in place. We use a uh, utility called Sentry. You can read more about it. And, uh, and uh, off topic, but uh, uh, telemetry, uh, incorporating uh, how the user is behaving with functions and your project, uh, you can ask them to uh, uh, agree on may sending the, those metrics, and that's going to also improve on identifying the user adoption and other things. Nightly bits and testing, there could be uh, all those tests that we saw, we could have a, a nightly builds to check whether there are no failures in such and everything is uh, on track. If there are failures, we identify from which point they are failing. Uh, that and uh, then once you have this enormous pipeline in process, it's uh, it should be evolved to uh, support the increasing workload. So the thought process of uh, constant evolution and constant feedback so should always be there. And then using stable branches and feature toggle, uh, as we mentioned. And if you ever find any manual or repetitive tasks, always look forward to automating them and uh, uh, you try to uh, um, try to always uh, uh, do this process, uh, make those uh, user developer experience smoother. So uh, challenges we are working on the Kubernetes based uh, environment. And uh, I think uh, we are off time and drop this but uh, these are general tools that you can use and any questions I'll, uh... okay uh, i don't see any questions in the q a sections uh so if you have any we have still two minutes uh, feel free to uh, put it there yeah. and if not uh, you, you can you can use your last minute <laughs> to wrap uh, the session up huh? Feel free to reach out to me on my contact details as well. Okay, uh, I don't see any questions. So, uh, if uh, any question can uh, come to my, come to your mind, uh, you can uh, move on to uh, Work Adventure, uh, which is a virtual platform uh, where you can uh, uh, meet uh, Deepika and you can um, you can talk uh, uh, about the topics. Uh, I want so mm, thank you very much for uh, for your presentation and that's for it mm, thank you